Hey, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today we are going to talk about a big difference between these two cameras, the X-T line and the X-H line. One of them has all of the great top-down dials that we love from Fuji, and the other one has what's called a PASM dial, the one dial to rule them all. Which one of these dials is right for you? Let's find out. Before we get started, let me just say, I know you're going to come after me. Oh, I know. I know how you are. Oh, yeah. You love, you love these dials. You love them. I love them, too. Don't get me wrong. Shot with this camera for two years. Love them. Love them. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Cool. Clicky, clicky. Great. I know you're going to come after me in the comments <laughs> because I'm about to tell you that these dials are not as great as you think they are. But hey, that's, you know, I suffer the slings and arrows for my art. So come on, come at me, come, come at me, bro. Let's go. We're going to talk about these buttons. We're going to be honest about these buttons in this video. There's a lot to cover. Uh, this, this video turned out to be much bigger than I thought it was going to be. Once I started making notes, I realized, oh, there really is a lot to this. It's not just as simple as one has these dials and the other one doesn't have these dials. Okay. So let's talk about each dial in turn first. Uh, for the folks who maybe don't know anything about these dials or trying to pick one. So let's talk about the difference. The XT line has these big dials on the top of the camera. And we're going to call these top control, top dials. We'll call these top dials. And we'll call these, these little wheels on the front and the back, we'll call these control dials. Because that's what Fuji calls them. These are control dials. And then we'll just call these the top dials. Now there are three of them. This is your exposure compensation dial. If you're shooting in any auto mode, right and let the camera make decisions for you this will allow you to force the camera to make a decision that the camera thinks is wrong basically so the camera tries to give you the correct exposure but if you dial this to plus one then the camera will give you an exposure that is one stop greater than what it thinks is the correct exposure or you can dial it to minus one and it will be one stop under the correct exposure and i believe it is up to three stops it is so you can go three stops in either direction it's very handy when you are trying to change what the camera is doing automatically for you. The next big dial is this one, and this is your shutter speed dial. This is for changing the shutter speed in the camera. And then this is the ISO dial, which is for changing the ISO in the camera. Now, the XH line does not have those dials. It only has one dial, one dial to rule them all, and in the darkness bind them. This is called the PASM dial, P-A-S-M. However, on Fuji, it actually is a PS. AM dial, so it's a pssn. Um, it's actually better that way, though, I will be honest, because having manual next to um, aperture priority is a better setup for me, because most people, you're either in manual or you're in aperture priority. The only people that use shutter priority are maybe uh, like sports shooters and stuff like that, that, where they're like, I've got to have my camera at four thousandths of a second. So they use shutter priority for that. Uh, but a lot of other people were either in manual or were in aperture priority or something along those lines. So the PSAM dial um, instead has, instead of having it where on the top of the XT line, you set each thing where you want it, or you set each thing to the auto setting that you want, the PSAM dial has auto settings built into it. And you change those and the camera does it for you. And before we talk about those, I'll talk about the other thing that the PSAM dial has that the other camera doesn't have. And that is all of these custom settings. And on this line, there are seven of them. See all these CCCCs? These are all custom settings. You can set your camera up however you want to set it up with the shutter speed, the aperture, the white balance, the photometry, whatever you want to set up. And then you can go into the menu system and say, save that to C1. And then anytime you change that dial to C1, it automatically changes all your settings to the custom setup that you put into the camera. I think you can even change like, you know, am I, am I recording RAWs or JPEGs? And you, you can change pretty much anything you want. And the camera will then remember that setting for you. You can even give it a name. And this is extremely useful, uh, especially if you're a person like me who does lots of types of photography. So... When I'm in the studio, I'm always using the same thing. For, for headshots, for example, I'm always using the same setup. My shutter speed is the same. My aperture is the same. My ISO is the same. My white balance is already prefigured. I've got it dialed into the camera. Now, on this camera, I have the automatic white balance. I have the white balance program because you could save your white balances in, in this camera as well. Like there's three 
unique custom white balances that you can save. So I have that one. But if in my studio, I would set this to the custom white balance that I need, and then I would change my shutter speed and my ISO to match what I always shoot at. And I would need to remember, oh, well, that's right, I'm always at 160 on my ISO, and I'm always at 180 on my shutter speed. So I would remember that, and I would put it down there. With this camera, you don't have to do that. With this camera, you just dial it all in one time, you say, save that baby. And then all you have to do is go, oh, I'm in the studio, and you just dial to studio headshot. You literally can name it in the menu system. Studio headshot. C1, studio headshot. So you just go there, bam, camera's set up, and you're ready to go. And it's really convenient. And, and, it's, and it's also useful when you're out on location. You have different settings you tend to use a lot on location, especially if you're working inside and then outside. It's a big thing for the PASM dial that makes the PASM dial pretty cool. But there's, there's other things that are kind of not cool. All right, let's, let's talk about these three dials and how you set them. Because this is really a big factor. People love this camera and they love these dials and they, they love using them. I do too. The tactile feel of them, the way they look, it's fantastic. But let's talk about how practical it is. Because I think this is a really big a really big thing that people don't talk about enough when it comes to this camera. If you watched my videos before, you know that I'm all about I want everything to be ergonomic. I want it to feel good in my hand. I want it to be easy to use. I'm lazy. I want things to be easy. I don't want to have to think. So let's talk about these dials. First of all, there's the ISO dial. I'll give it ISO dial winner XT. Okay. Because this dial, you can set it to all of your ISO settings. It's very easy. You just reach up, you set your ISO, and you're good to go. Right? That's great. Now, what do you have to do here if you want to set your ISO? Well, there's an ISO button. And you press this button, it brings up the ISO, and then you turn this dial. And it's displayed right here on your screen. So it's press, turn. Now, there's other ways you can change your ISO. You can press and move the joystick. And that will change your ISO. You can map it to another button. For instance, I have it mapped down here as well. So if I just go down here and hit my D-pad, it brings it up. And I can just go through like this. So I have it figured out right now. And I haven't finished configuring this camera. But right now, it's almost impossible for me not to go into ISO mode. And almost any button I hit on my camera <laughs> takes me into ISO mode. I did it on purpose. I want to be able to find it easy. Uh, because, you know, you can't just reach up on top of the camera like you can on the X-T5. However, yeah. You can reach up on the top of the camera and do the ISO. But do you? Like, if you're shooting like this and you want to change your ISO, do you take this hand off the camera and reach up here and do this? I'll bet you don't. I'll bet what you do is you drop it and you do this. And then you come back with it. Or, I'll bet you keep this in the C setting and you don't use it at all. If you're here and you want to change your ISO, you just use this back button right here, or the front, whichever one you've got programmed. Or you just use one of the command dials, right? That's what you do. And if you're using the command dial to change your ISO on this camera, you're doing the same thing that I do on the XH. So you're really not getting the usage out of this that it's designed for, which is setting it here. Okay, so think about that. Are you going to use this ISO dial? Because if you're not gonna use it, that's a factor. It's pretty, and that's a factor too. <laughs> but if you're not going to use it, keep that in mind. All right, let's go to the next dial. We're going to the far side. We're going to talk about this one, the exposure compensation dial. Now, the exposure compensation dial. This dial allows you to change what the camera is doing when it's in auto mode. So if you're letting the camera pick your exposure for you, you can force the camera to do something different with this dial. So if you're like, great, give me the best exposure you think uh, for the scene camera, but I want you to overexpose it by one stop or two stops or three stops or underexpose it by one, two or three stops. That's what this does for you. It lets you make those changes. However, if you want to make those changes, how do you do it? Do you reach up with your thumb and turn it like this? No, you don't because you see it doesn't stick out on the back. See, see your thumb is here. It doesn't, there's a ridge here. So it doesn't stick out. It's not designed to be operated with just your thumb. It's designed to be operated with two fingers. So if you're changing your exposure compensation, 
you're going to drop it and you're going to change it and you're going to come back up. Either that or you're going to do this and you're going to hang on with one hand and you're going to do this. Or you're going to set this to C, which is where mine has been set since the day I bought the camera. And if I want to change my exposure compensation, I use one of the dials on the back. If you're in an auto mode, one of these dials will automatically revert to exposure compensation. So you use the command dial to change your exposure compensation, which is the way that this camera is set up natively. If you're in an auto mode, one of the dials will change your exposure compensation for you. Okay, it's a cool dial. Are you using it? And then there's the shutter speed dial. This is actually the worst dial of the three. <laughs> you can reach up here and you can change your shutter speed. Again, it's designed to be done with two fingers. It's not designed to be done with just your thumb. So you're going to have to come like this to do it if, you, if it's to your eye or you're going to have to drop it and do it and come back up. Here's the problem with the shutter speed dial. It doesn't have every shutter speed value on it. It's one stop increments, not third of a stop increments. So you can go from 500 to 1000, but if you want to go somewhere in between 500 and 1000, guess where you have to go? Command dial. That's right. You have to go to the command dial and then you can go to 640 or 800 and then finally up to 1000 after that. You see the difference? Except if you're on 500 and you want to go up, you go 640 800. If you click it again, guess what? It doesn't go to 1,000. You got to go back up here and hit this button to go to 1,000. So one stop increments here. And if you want to go in between those two stops, you have to go here. And once you're here, you can't stay here. You have to go back to here. Or you could just put this in T mode and then always change your shutter speed with one of your command dials. And that would allow you to roll to any shutter speed you want while the camera is to your eye without moving your hands. Which is, of course, the way this camera works all the time. All right. You got, you got your torches ready? Go, go light your torch and grab your pitchfork and I'll wait here until you get back. Let's, let's do this. Let's talk about what kind of photographer you are, and then we will, we will pick a camera for you. How does that sound? Because it, it sounds like I'm just trashing the buttons on top of the X-T series, and I'm not. I love the buttons on top of the X-T series, and yes, I use them. I just don't use them nearly as much as I should. I, get, I, I use them, but at what cost? I guess that's what I'm saying. You know, Is it worth it? To have the buttons when, well, I'll give an example. If I'm in uh, an auto mode, if I'm in manual, right? If I'm in, if I'm in manual and I want to go to aperture priority, if I've got this camera and I'm in manual and I want to go to aperture priority, all I have to do is do this. Click and I'm in aperture priority. If I'm on this camera and I am in manual and I want to go to aperture priority, well, if I'm in manual using these dials and I want to go into aperture priority, then I got to turn this one to C and I got to turn this one to T, which by the way drives me nuts and I made a video about that on my channel because why is it C on one and T on the other? Why isn't it the same thing and why, why aren't they colored so they're easier to find? But that's a whole other video. Um, so I have to adjust both of these dials to go into aperture priority whereas it's just one click here. All right, let's, let's talk about what kind of photographer you are. And let's talk about what works for you. Okay, so here's my questions. Are you new to photography? Like, you're just picking up a camera. I don't know anything about the exposure triangle or the inverse square law or the camera renders for neutral gray. I, I don't understand how all this stuff works. Well, if that's the case, I would highly recommend this camera because having these big dials, here's your shutter, here's your ISO, here's your aperture on the front, that's very handy because it makes it very easy for you to distinguish the three settings. Whereas if you're using the X-H2 line, you know, it's all in here. That being said, if you're using an X-H line, you're going to get used to it. You know, 
you're going to get used to using these dials. I started out using Canon, and so I learned by using these dials to change my shutter and my ISO. And it was weird for me to not use those dials. So you get used to whatever you use. But I don't think many people who are just getting into photography are really going to buy the most expensive and best camera that Fuji makes. There's really no reason to when they make so many other cameras that are great that are less expensive. So I think it's a no-brainer. If you're new to photography, the X-T line is great for you. Or, you know, the X-H line, which also has, you know, well, it has a PASM dial. So, yeah, I take that back. <laughs> I take that back. This is a great camera for somebody who's new to photography because it's got those big dials on it. Okay, here's one you probably didn't see coming. You're a photographer. Do you wear reading glasses? Yeah. Do you wear reading glasses? I'm guessing that you do. And you know why? Because when I look in the analytics for my videos, it seems that every single person who watches my channel is a man in his 60s. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? That's my target market. I love you. Thank you. <laughs> so if you wear reading glasses, if you wear reading glasses, which one of these two cameras is right for you? Well, it's going to be this one. If you're a professional photographer, especially, and you're thinking about upgrading or changing your camera, but you don't know which one to get, I can tell you that someone, who's wear, someone who wears reading glasses, this can be frustrating because it's got these great dials on top, but you can't read them without your glasses. And if you're shooting through the viewfinder all the time, these, these are just dead to me most of the time anyway. I got to put on my reading glasses in order to see what they are. It also makes it harder if I want to switch into auto modes. I've got to switch this camera to A or to C or to T or to A on the other dial. That's two dials I've got to work with and the letters are kind of small and I can't read them. So what do I do? Instead, I look through the viewfinder where I can see the numbers and I use my control dials to get where I want to go, which is the same as this camera. So again, I'm not really getting out of this camera what I need to get out of this camera. Next question, do you work in dark locations? Do you work in a basement? Are you chained to a boiler? <laughs> Did I say broiler? Boiler? <laughs> Are you chained to something that makes great toast? Uh, so if you work in dark locations, guess what? These dials aren't lit. I can't tell you how many times I've looked down to change the setting on this camera and I can't see the camera to change the setting. However, on here, this, there's a light right there. Bing, it lights up in the dark. No problem. You can see your settings all the time. If you're looking down at your camera and changing your settings, you can do that on this camera. You cannot do it on this camera in the dark. That may be, that right there may be all you need to know, depending on what kind of photography you do. If you're working at night, this is gonna be a harder, this is gonna be a harder camera for you to work with. Or what you're gonna have to do is set everything to T and C and just use the dials and work it there, which is the same as this camera all the time anyway, so you're not even using the dials that you bought the camera because you love them. Hey, it's pre-recorded Blu-ray here with a quick reminder to be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere the podcasts are found. I guarantee you will have a good time. Give it a listen. Also, join my group on Facebook. It's called Pro Photo Talk with Blu-ray Perry. It's a great community and a great place to go if you want to talk to fellow photographers, ask questions, have a good time, and like and subscribe to my channel because that helps to keep this channel alive. And the main thing that keeps this channel alive is my gear page. If you go down into the description and you look for my gear page, you will find links to all of the gear that I use both professionally and when I travel and if you click on one of those links you buy something I get a couple of dollars and it helps me to keep this channel alive do you prefer the viewfinder or do you prefer the LCD ah if you prefer the viewfinder this is the camera for you you're gonna look through the viewfinder you're gonna change all your settings and that's fine if you prefer the LCD this might be the camera for you because you're using the LCD anyway, so you're wearing your reading glasses if you need them, so it's no big deal for you to look here and make, change your settings, unless of course it's dark and then you're screwed. Uh, but here you go, right? So you can just do it this way. That's fine. Also, coincidentally and off topic, this camera actually has a better LCD than the X-H line does. I don't know why they did that, but they did. The LCD on this, actually, on this camera actually has more dots, like 8 million dots versus 6 million dots or something, something like that. Uh, so if you're an LCD shooter, and maybe you are, maybe you're a set it up on a tripod, maybe you shoot headshots and that sort of thing, 
Yeah, this camera's great for that. In fact, when I do headshots now, I'm still using this camera and not the X-H2 because it's got, well, I've got this plate on it that makes it easy to set on, on, on and takes great pictures. And so, yeah, this is a great headshot camera. Uh, so, yeah, if you're an LCD shooter, then you've already got your glasses on anyway and moving the camera around, looking at the top's no big deal. This might be the camera for you. Do you work on a tripod? Ah. If you work on a tripod all the time, again, this might be the camera for you. Because working on a tripod, very easy to just reach up here and change these dials. Unless, of course, you want a shutter speed that's in a one-third stop increment, in which case you're going to have to go to the command dials anyway. That, that's a really, can you tell it really bugs me? That one-third, that, that really bugs me that they put these dials on top of the camera, except for that, except for that one caveat that if you want to actually dial in two-thirds of the possible shutter speeds available to you, you can't use this dial. That, that, and I get it. They, there's not enough room on the dial for all those numbers. I get it. But it's just annoying that they couldn't do it, that, that, they, that, they, that they, they force you. <laughs> they give you these dials and they force you into the command dials. Anyway, if you shoot on a tripod all the time, this camera's great for you. If you're shooting on a low tripod, like for instance, I do headshots and my headshots are standing up. So a lot of times my camera is like this high or even higher. So these don't do me any good. I got to move my camera off and like that. So, and I don't want to change my camera. So I'm going to use the command dials anyway if my, if my camera's up. The only way, I take, way I'm going to use this is if I have on a tripod down here. Now, if you're a nature shooter, you're probably shooting on a low tripod. That's great. That, you know, I, I can see how this camera would be perfect if you're the guy who's you know, sitting out in the cold marsh with a little tripod, uh, sitting there eating your bologna sandwich at 5 o'clock in the morning as the sun goes up, trying to get a great picture of an egret. God bless you. I hope you're having a good time because I'm never going out there with you. But, you know, <laughs> I think you're great. You're doing a fine job. And in that case, yeah, nothing better than watching the sunrise over the beautiful command dials on, on the Fuji X-T5. I'm all for you there. Knock yourself out. Do you change settings a lot? Do you change settings a lot? Um, this is kind of a tricky one. If you change settings a lot on your camera, the way I do when I'm working events, I have to change settings a lot. For some of you, it may be easier to change your settings a lot by looking down and changing your settings and then coming back up. But for me, it is... Don't get me wrong, if I've got my glasses on, it's easier for me to look at the top of this camera and quickly change my settings. Yes. But if I'm shooting with my glasses off, it's easier for me to do it with this camera because I'm just going to do it right here. And I also don't want to pull the camera away and change settings because it makes me like, oh, you may take a picture? Okay. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't like doing that. I'd rather go, okay, and while I'm just saying, I'll go, okay, and I'm changing my settings, and I'm talking to them. Okay, and I'm changing my settings, but they don't know that. They, they don't know what I'm doing. They think I'm focusing or something. They, they don't know anything about these cameras. And you can do that with this camera as well, right? So, so to be totally fair, you can do with this camera what you do with this camera as well, but you won't be using these top dials, and you will have the top dials an option as you, if you ever do need them. So it's kind of a toss-up if you change the settings a lot, really, as to which one of these cameras works best for you. Finally, and this is a big one, how important is style? Listen, there's no, there's, this is no competition. There is no competition. When it comes to style, one of these cameras wins and the other one does not win. And period, period, as my friend used to say, period. One of these wins and one of them doesn't win. And I shouldn't have to tell you which one is the winner, but I will. It's this one. This camera is more beautiful. It's got more style. It's got those big dials. It's gorgeous. That is no doubt the hands down winner in that competition. This camera looks like just every other camera that you see. It looks like the Sony's, looks like the Nikon's, looks like the Canon's. Yeah, but it's just, I mean, style Blu ray. The camera is a tool, style is not important. Well, the hell you say. I said, good day, sir. Style is important because loving your camera is important. As an artist, you need to enjoy the tools. There's a reason that a painter has a favorite paintbrush right? There's a reason that a, a guy who works on cars has a favorite wrench. Things like this are important and style is important. So don't downplay it. You may very well be like, listen, everything you said, Beret, tells me that this is the right camera for me. 
However, I just love this camera. Great, go with that. Go with this camera. It's perfectly okay to indulge yourself. It's perfectly okay to get the thing that you want simply because you want it. It doesn't have to be because you did a checklist with Mr. Bure and figured out which one would be the right one for you. Because I do that too, don't get me wrong. As you can tell, I have a whole channel devoted to it where I love to do the lefts and the rights and the ups and the downs and let's make a list here and pros and cons and figure out which one is perfect for me. But in the end of the day, get the one you love the most. And let me tell you, I love this camera. Unfortunately, there's a couple of things about this camera I don't love that I do love about this camera. Most importantly, the grip. And that's, of course, in my other uh, several videos that talk about that. So for me, it was a trade-off. Am I going to trade off the love for the dials in order to get the love of the grip? And I decided, yeah, I was. I was going to have to give up my dials in order to get the grip that I wanted. <laughs> There's no way I've covered everything. Go ahead. Blow up the comments. Get to it. T uh, t tell me all the things I missed. Tell me all the things I forgot because it's just way too many factors here uh, to be able to cover them all. But hopefully, we talked through this together enough that you've got some idea if you're coming at these cameras, especially if you've never used either one of them, if you're coming at these cameras and trying to figure out which one's right for you based on the dials and the buttons on the camera, hopefully you've got some idea today of which one might be the best one for you. I highly recommend you go and you put a couple of these cameras into your hands before you make a choice so that you can get a feel for it because that's every bit as important as everything else that I've been talking about. But let's hope that maybe you're a little bit more informed and a little bit closer to making the decision today than you were yesterday. Thanks for watching.